Do you need a buyer agent? The short answer, it's no. You're not required to have a buyer's agent, but if you're looking to get the best value on a property, then you probably should. Let's talk about the pros and cons of having a buyer's agent when buying a house. Let's also talk about how much it's gonna cost you and if it's really a wise investment and well, some other options you might have as well. But real quick, my name is Jeff Chubb and I'm a retired investment banker, third real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. I get calls, texts, and emails from folks just like you who are looking to make a move. So whether you're looking to buy in the next nine or 90 days, it doesn't matter. It would be an honor to help you. You can also find all of my contact information in the description below or visit youtuberealestateagent.com and just fill in your information and then we'll reach out to you. So you don't need a buyer agent, but it might be a good idea. A buyer agent's job is to look out for the buyer's best interest. I, I think it's very important to note that not all agents are created equal. And frankly, there are a lot of really bad agents out there. So, well, you need to beware. A good buyer agent should be educating the buyer about the entire process, then guiding them through that process step by step. Someone buying what is most likely the largest asset should never feel lost in the weeds. They should have a good understanding of what lies ahead. Now, a buyer's agent will negotiate for a buyer's best interest throughout the entire transaction. They will obviously be the key to the negotiation at the time of the offer, but also should there be any issues from a home inspection or appraisal negotiations. They will provide a buyer with reputable companies to work with when it comes to ensuring that they're getting the best value in regards to financing. They'll also provide recommendations for professionals, like a quality home inspector is a great example. Now, a buyer's agent's job is to look out for a buyer's best interest and make the process, well, as stress-free and as enjoyable as possible. If you opt to not use a buyer agent, then you do have some options. You could use a dual agent, a facilitator, or have an attorney represent you in the transaction. Let's talk about these options in a little more detail. Now, a seller's agent can help a buyer in two ways. They can act as a dual agent or they can act as a facilitator. In most cases, the seller's agent will become a dual agent. You're representing both you and the seller to the best of their ability. <laughs> I always laugh when I think about this. How can you represent two parties to the best of your ability? Anyhow, this strategy can become more risky depending on how much direction that a buyer is looking to receive from that agent. Keep in mind that that agent is someone whose original relationship well, started with that seller. Heck, as far as the buyer knows, the seller and their agent could be best friends. It's also someone that is compensated based on the amount the house sells for. In other words, the higher the price, then the more they make. And times two, because they'd be receiving both sides of that compensation structure. When a buyer asks a seller's agent about pricing and for the comps on a specific property, then they're going to send comps that will justify the current asking price, not the offer strategy price. And maybe they omit that comp that was just around the corner that was seven months old, but was a way better comp and actually helped create an argument for a lower price because a low ball offer coming from the seller agent doesn't look too good to the original client, to the seller. Oh, Mr. Seller, here's an offer for $100,000 below your asking price. You should take it. The first question a seller should ask, well, wait a minute. It wasn't but a couple weeks ago that you were assuring me this is the right price to ask for this house. Yes, a seller's agent is not motivated in any way to get the best deal for a buyer. And I truly don't believe that someone can work as a dual agent and represent both parties to the best of their ability. But what if that person knows that the buyer is willing to pay, let's say $510,000, but the seller is willing to sell for 500 grand? Who gets that 10 grand? Another way of buying a house is utilizing that agent seller as a facilitator. This is someone who essentially just helped bring the offer and the transaction together. In this situation, this would be a buyer walking up to the seller's agent, not looking for any direction and saying, offer this amount with this closing date and I want an inspection contingency date to be done by this date. Essentially, that agent just becomes an order taker and no one's looking out for the best interest of the buyer. There's no one in the transaction looking for the certain pitfalls that could end up costing the buyer thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. If the sellers offer a compensation to a buyer agent, then the listing agent and will actually end up getting both sides of the commission when representing someone as a dual agent or facilitator. Now, sometimes a buyer will try to negotiate that full fee for themselves, but at the end of the day, that is solely up to the agent. And in most cases, 
that agent ends up taking down both sides of the deal. And the last option is an attorney. Now, attorneys are great for the legal end. You'll be covered from the legal perspective of important dates and things like that. And they will guide you through the transaction. But I get to find an attorney with a great pet side manner, let alone one that is actually good at negotiation. They're deal killers, quite frankly. And it makes sense as that's really not their specialty. Most attorneys won't be as well versed on the market and comps as well as actual strategy when it comes to winning a bid. This is the case for most attorneys. Like Aegis, you can get bad ones, just like you can get good ones. But like the facilitator, the attorney acts as, well, an order taker. But I think this makes a lot more sense than having a seller's agent actually represent you as a dual agent or facilitator. But a little known fact here in Massachusetts that all attorneys are able to get their real estate license as part of their attorney license. So they will then be acting as a buyer agent be compensated as such from the seller. An attorney most likely will not be doing property tours and advising you on certain properties while talking about market conditions. The like work will be left to the buyer in most cases. So how do you pay for a buyer agent? Well, there are two ways. You can work with a buyer agent off of contingency or you can pay them up front. An agent's compensation is actually very similar to an attorney, but a lot less expensive. If you hire an attorney to represent you in a case, then you can hire them on contingency where they're gonna take 30 to 40% of the winnings from that case. By law, I can't talk about standards as this is commission related, so I wanna talk about myself personally. I will work on contingency for two to 3% of the purchase price. This is something that is 100% negotiable and in most cases is paid for at closing on the seller side of the closing statement. The other way, it's to hire a buyer agent to work on an hourly basis. Just like an attorney, generally a retainer is owed up front and then you agree upon an hourly rate and the scope of work is also agreed upon. Again, I can't talk about standards, so I'm gonna use myself as an example. I charge $250 an hour with a $2,000 upfront retainer. The initial consultation where we go over the process as well as the current market conditions is free. At this time, we'll also go over the scope of work that you're looking for from me. Are you looking for me to come to all the showings to personally look for new listings each day and send along? Or are you planning on saving money and just doing a lot of that legwork yourself? Are you looking for more guidance throughout the transaction? Or did you just want me to stick to the legal and the negotiation side? It's 100% up to you. And at the end, if the seller is offering a buyer side compensation, then you as the buyer, you get to retain that whole entire thing as you've hired me and my team to work for you on an hourly basis. So if it was 3% of a $500,000 house, then that 15 grand revert back to you as a buyer. Again, my name is Jeff Chubb with the Chubb Home Team. I hope you found this video helpful. Whether you're looking to buy a home in Massachusetts or anywhere else in the country, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Yes, I personally can only help people in Massachusetts, but I do have expert ages that I work with all over the country, and it would be a true pleasure to make an introduction for you at no cost to you, obviously. If you have any questions or are interested in buying a new home, then give me a call, shoot me an email, or visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com. You can also find all of my contact information in the description below. Until next time.